Andrew, how are you feeling today? I'm not bad. Not bad. Yeah. Not <laughs> It's bad. been a long day, but I'm okay. We're towards the end of the week. Yes, uh, um, that doesn't mean that it won't be. Uh, I, I'm not sure I have an end of the week. <laughs> <laughs> I can relate. To um, uh, so, so usually it's um, weekends are busy. On Saturday, I, I have my program on RTK 103. So, Saturdays I'm up at the same time um, like I do during the week. Mm -hmm. um, I'm at the studios usually um, at about half past seven. Um, not later than that the program starts at nine and i go straight to 12. um then it's obviously closing down and and sort of organizing the last bits and pieces and then um by saturday afternoon i'm completely uh, out but um uh, and then Saturday and su then sundays usually i spend uh, especially in the afternoons preparing lectures preparing for any talks that i have Uh, preparing for any meeting, so I use Saturday, Sunday afternoon uh, to to uh, get myself organized for the week. So it's usually like Saturday afternoon and Sunday morning are my weekend. Okay. So yes. How does that work for you in terms of work-life balance? No, no, it doesn't work. It that doesn't work. I, I, look, first of all, I I enjoy what I do. I enjoy being at university. I enjoy my my experiences at university. Um, I enjoy meeting students, researching, um, but um, and, and I also enjoy broadcasting. Broadcasting I've been doing for this last um, uh, probably 17 or 18 years, if not more, uh, always on radio except for one year. Well, I did a couple of years on on F Living when they started. Okay. It was a one-to-one -one, um, uh, uh, program called FEMA. Then I did a year of Andesian 8 on TVM, on TVM in 2013. But cutting across, um, I've been I've been right through uh, broadcasting uh, practically every Saturday for these last, must be 16 or 17 Saturday, 17 years like worth of... Uh, it is a marathon. I'm probably... The, 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 my, my radio show is probably... Uh, my current affairs program is probably the longest standing current affairs program. Uh, Sharabank was um, uh, uh, had taken, um, uh, you know, uh, it was uh, overtaken me yeah. for a couple of, of of years. But now, now that Sharabank has been stopped, I ha I am probably the the um, mo the, the oldest running uh, current affairs program uh, on on radio for sure. That's for sure. Um, on other on on well, other medium on other platforms, other broad, broad platforms um, I'm, I'm probably. I can't think of another program that has been running for so long. Mm -hmm. um, and radio has always been a passion. Uh, the mic has always been a passion. I have always been extremely terrified before every show. Um, uh, I get I get very irritable physically. Um, I'm uncomfortable. Um, uh, I'm, I'm extremely excited, um, very tense before every radio show for these last... That? I don't know. I don't know. When I when I didn't feel that, um, usually the program doesn't turn out as as good as I would have expected. Okay. Um, uh, it's probably because probably because my character is that way. When I have something which I am I want to perform well in, I have that feeling. It's it's it works the same way when I have lectures. Mm. Um, thankfully, I have blocks of three hours of lectures, so it happens once every three lectures, not once every lecture, which would have been even more complicated. So I get anxious, I get stage fright um, uh, until five to seven minutes before the lecture or the radio program. Okay. Uh, once I'm in front of the mic ready to go, I'm, 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 I'm good, I'm good. Then I'm, I'm fine, then I'm comfortable. Then I could do anything, be uh, be myself in the most natural way, and obviously discuss the issues that we have on the on the agenda. All right, and it's my, it, during the program it must be very challenging to coordinate the the conversations as well because you do handle debates and you do handle difficult conversations and you do ask difficult uh, questions. Uh -huh. I ask the questions that that uh, I want an answer to. So. Uh, in a way, it is a bit of a of of radio is also something that I do for myself. So radio is a way of me getting to understand um, a number of issues. So 
uh, it is very rare that I will be discussing issues which do not interest me directly, even though they might be very important issue. issues. Let me give you an example. Let's say we are, there's a, an issue with, I don't know, something related to economy. I'm interested in economy, but in the in the in the sort of the broader sense of the economy, the the, the concept around the economy, the choice of economy that we are making, the choice of the choices that we are make on how to apply our economy. But if you had to stay telling me, uh, you know, about inflation, GDP, and all this stuff, yeah. then I wouldn't be interested, even if it is at the heart of the of the public debate, even if it is at the center of the public debate. So, I only discuss issues. Um, that are of interest to me because I am. I always say to myself that I am part of the audience. I have a position on most subjects that I discuss. I uh, often claim those positions. I often say what those positions are uh, publicly, uh, what these positions are, um, and I do not shy away from those positions because I believe that people who are listening to me need to know where I'm coming from. Yeah, Let's definitely. say we are discussing abortion. Yeah. I cannot. I cannot not if there's a this debate on abortion between the pro and the pro choice and the and the pro life uh, I, I cannot i cannot have this debate and the people who are pro choice do not know that i am pro life yeah. i think that would be extremely unfair for the guest Definitely. and extremely unfair for those who listen to me having said that a lot of broadcasters say that they should be impartial i think there's only one moment where we're going to be completely impartial and that is when we are uh, laying on our fa our faces up in our coffins um, apart from that we always have positions on everything that we come across so i do transmit that luckily when it comes to subjects that i debate i luckily i am interested in in most issues that are happening so i rarely leave important issues which are on the national agenda not debated mm -hmm. all right and you mentioned something very important yeah. and i um to me especially and in, in in the most recent coaching sessions that i gave is that i also asked the question where do i position myself with this yes it's the importance of positioning oneself within a particular context it can be as simple as how how do i feel about this person how this person is treating me or or, or or behaving with me but it can be also on a, on a on a bigger topic like abortion as you said how do you balance between obviously you call it was your the face of the program how do you balance between you and your personal opinion with with that i mean do you bring yourself to the day to, to, to the yes program? i bring i bring myself to the table i bring myself in the program i i am and that that at times is a bit of a discomfort for people because especially when it comes to to um, uh, you know uh, delicate subjects like for example positioning on on debates around abortion yeah. around around euthanasia around um, cannabis um, and this this um, uh, argument of harm reduction, political issues uh, of all sorts. I, 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 I position myself. That at times irritates people because people feel that um, if the, the fact that I'm saying, say, claiming my position, um, it is it is in a way um, the fact that I'm biased. It it creates a bias. We're all biased. In a, in a We're all biased. But I think I'm I'm in a better position than somebody who does not, who does not declare a bias. Yeah, because okay. you know where my bias is. Yeah. So when you are listening to my questions, to my line of questioning, when you are, um, I'm exposing myself to you and telling you, listen, this is where I'm coming from. If I'm saying, I'm, if, I, if I've done, I, I do like a number of, of broadcasters, some come to mind, playing the, the, the neutral, but knowing well enough that they are, they are really and truly have a very clear position on the issues mm -hmm. for example they favor the government very clearly and support the government but play the game of you know um, uh, I have no position on this I'm new term whatever um, I think that is unethical and unfair yeah. whilst I say now obviously um, for example I've, I've had experiences where for example between 2011 and, and 14 and 15 um, I was a, a very strong um, supporter in the sense I've, I believed a lot in for example Joseph Muscat mm -hmm. and his ideas and he had very good ideas i think it did some very good work in a number of, of areas mm -hmm. um, especially when it comes to human rights disability issues gay uh, lgbtiq plus uh, issues um, uh, well he 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 had a number of of very good yeah. ideas which i supported i thought at the time and 
and I still think that was the right thing to happen. Uh, the nationalists had to uh, needed to be removed, needed mm-hmm. to be changed, and that is what what happened. Um, at the time, I was completely um, ostracized from being invited to programs as a guest um, uh, from the nationalist party, and I used to get this continuous hate. Uh, at times, even even hate mail, even hate messages, and and uh, a lot of aggravation because I was, um, uh, you know, uh, going up the bad okay. side of the government. Yeah. Um, nowadays, I, I think the the current government has a lot to answer to. A number of decisions are are questionable. A number of issues that happened were unacceptable. The death of Daphne Caruana Galizia was another very important. Um, uh, the assassination was another very important wake-up call that things are not right in this country when a journalist is killed, is assassinated and in that way uh, something is intrinsically wrong and the responsibility is of the state of the government so so you can't shy away from that how can I how can I not say that and then you get it the other way around you're ostracized I'm now ostracized from the 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 super one and and uh, uh, radio stations of of the Labour Party which is fine I have no problem I mean, they're, they're, by both now <laughs> no the other ones now invite me um, uh, I'm sure that at some point it will the the, the, the wheel will go around and, and will change some people tell me, "Well, you are uh, an opportunist." I, well, if you are, if, if you if you think about it, I'm always or almost always on the side of the people who are uh, on the losing end. When the Labour Party was in in opposition, I was supporting Joseph Scott. When um, now that things are not right, I am obviously um, uh, I, I I have I share some of the views or, or an, a number of views of the Nationalist Party. That doesn't make me, um, uh, uh, you know, it doesn't make me uh, an idiot. It doesn't make me somebody who hasn't got, uh, t- you know, uh, my own opinions, my own my own way of coming to, to terms with, with, with the issues. More so, I, I, I believe that I have my own brain and I want to, to yeah. command my thoughts and not the other way around. No, personally, I think that um, it's healthy to change opinions. One, because you're, you're changing as a human being, and sometimes it's accepting people need to accept that pe- people change, whether we like it or not. It might be slowly, but and, 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 and it might be all, all of a sudden as well. But people do change, and we have to accept that people change, and it might not be the change that we're looking for. So, for example, if you were... Um, um, in favor of a particular party and your opinion changed over time some people might not like that you change your opinion yes uh, but you change your opinion because you now know more than you used uh-huh. to five years yes. ago well I think uh, there are two things that come to mind first of all I think people um, uh, through social media find it comfortable to attack at any chance and opportunity yes. they have so instead of watching TV watching Netflix watching I don't know what uh, they, 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 they stay um, scrolling on, on Instagram and 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 uh, on Facebook and simply using that tool to to attack people I'm not saying having different opinions and sharing an idea I'm saying they actually mm-hmm. people are actually interested in attacking for the sake of um, aggravating other people, which is which is very unfortunate, uh, because I don't like that. I've never liked it, and I still don't like it. Mm-hmm. The idea of having a thick skin does not work for me. I feel insulted. I feel, I feel that it is not fair. Nihuali, um, as they say in Maltese, yeah. when people attack me, not they attack my arguments. Let's say I, I yeah. am saying, listen, I, I don't agree that uh, young people under the age of 14 go to prison, for example. Yeah. Um, I'm okay that you come up with, with your argument. Say, listen, I think there are some people, some young people, who there's no other solution other than putting them into prison, for example. And we have an argument, we have a debate, and we end up, you know, you keep your own opinions, I keep mine, there's no problem. But that you insult me. And you call me um, words, and you 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 try to cancel me, which happens is happening all the time. That I have a problem with. So that's the first sort of thing I, I uh, which which comes to mind. The second is that I don't really change a party. I know I don't change my ideas. Yeah. So if the it's not a question of party. I've voted for all parties, um, for all the three main parties. Um, so it isn't a question of it. It's a question of which party has represents mostly um, what I believe in. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, I mean, the Nationalist Party at this point in time, for example, mentioned 
that uh, they 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 think that you know the message is coming through that they should um, uh, you know foreign people should be um, the number should go down. I think I think that is a ridiculous ridiculous recommendation. It won't happen. It will not happen because the economy how it is and and how we have designed our our communities there is no way getting it more organized having um, um, better pay protecting the workers um, uh, organizing more the communities more integration programs improving language and conversation and communication of course that is the way to go but telling us that the population has gone up by 25 percent now what happens what, what are you going to do you're going to put it down back to 25 percent so that i think is silly i can never agree with the nationalist party i cannot agree with the labor party who also have have are playing the, the, this populist card um but I have been consistent. I have been consistent on a number of issues. Uh, I've been consistent on, on, on migrants. I have been consistent that, that migrants should find a safe haven here and kept as much as needed. I have been consistent on not having um, uh, cannabis introduced in Malta or not having euthanasia uh, introduced in Malta. I have been consistent in believing that young people, even at the age of 16, should be contesting elections and should be mayors. And finally, it's, it is happening. I have been uh, consistent in uh, saying that the church, was it is a very important institution which has contributed immensely to our welfare state, mm -hmm. needs to be revamped because it is, has because secularization has completely almost completely obliterated it mm -hmm. and it, it, it thinks because it has these big buildings which are called churches temples they think that they are relevant they are no longer relevant so they need to rethink the relevance rethink the, the their importance so there are a number of things that i have remained consistent others i have evolved my thoughts for example i've always believed that people should have second chances but Nowadays, I am convinced that prison is doing nothing, or not nothing maybe, but very little mm. in the grander scheme of things when it comes to rehabilitating people. So there we need to invest ourselves okay. more. Yeah. Um, we need to invest not only in having social workers there and psychologists, which is a very important thing, and professionals. It is not only important that we have leaders within the, the the prison system which are not military which are not police but coming from the social and medical and caring sector which is happening which is good but this is also about rethinking our whole model of uh, of of um, uh, the way we we act um, uh, on on uh, we act uh, for for people who have done wrong things so first of all there are people who are who need to be in prison at all cost because they are very mm -hmm. dangerous people. But then there are loads and loads of other people who might need very little time in prison, get their punishment, you know, as well. But apart from the punishment, most of the people come out from prison. So what I want is a good rehab program because these people, 30, 40, 50 a month, come out of prison yeah. and they are back in our community. So if they're back in our community, I want them not to be frustrated, uh, more aversive towards the system, but rehabilitated, reformed, because they are going to be back in our community, you know, living side by side with us. Mm -hmm. So there I have evolved, and I here I, I can't not mention Papiazzo Pardo is a very close friend, I would I, I often refer to him as my, my elder brother, um, where I have learned a lot. We don't agree on everything, mind you. But on this, he has been a very important signpost yeah. in helping me understand that, listen, people who are um, struggling and end up in prison because of a crime, they need to be given a punishment, but they should also be given the opportunity for a second a third and a fourth, fifth, fifth chance. Yes, to redeem themselves, yeah. but keeping in mind as well, in a way it's egoistic as well, keeping in mind as well that a rehabilitated John, Daniel, Andrew, Peter, Paul, Mary will be better citizens in our community. So my house will be safe, my family will be safe, my car will be safe, I will be safe. There's an element of return on investment. In a that. return on investment, that's right. Now that it, I don't think is happening enough. Uh, recidivism is is very clearly very high, but apart from that, there is also a number of other issues which show that um, uh, the the sort of the model that we are using is a Hammurabi model, which is Aina line 
and sinal sinna. Eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. I understand that victims will, will want that, mind you. I would understand victims. But that is why we have the state. So that the state will help us uh, take control. The state yeah. will take control from the instinct of, of getting back, of vindicating ourselves. Mm -hmm. We need justice, not, not vindicating ourselves simply for, sh you know, because most of the people, it's not, not acceptable that they do wrong things, but most of the people who do wrong things is because the state earlier on had abandoned them, yeah. did not notice what was happening. And they take it upon their hands to, you, to yes, pass on their, yes, their own yes, sense of justice. Yes, and now and now um, and so so that is I think is is, is extremely important to to recognize. And you highlighted uh, many social cultural gaps. Yeah. And you mentioned the state quite often that the the state is a central figure and a central component in filling in these gaps, but also pushing the society and culture forward. How can the people, besides democratic um, and voting, but what can the people do to push society forward, make a more cohesive society? Uh, I, th I think we have we are um, at a crossroads. I think, um, like many other, uh, like many other countries, um, we are uh, a country is organic, a, a society is organic. Yeah. We are organic, so so I think we need to 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 depart from that from that um, angle that that society grows around you. Now it also grows around um, uh, depending around you depending on on what you are feeding it, on what you are contributing to it. So it doesn't. So society communities do not just happen. Yeah. Society and community need particular elements, particular ingredients, so that they can function. That so that they they grow in a particular way. If I had to give a simple metaphor, if you if you have a long long plant and you do not, um, you know, fix a, a little a little twig or 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 a piece of wood so that it retains its its shape, or if you would like it to go round your your doorway and so you need it you need it to go round the, this little piece of wire, you you need to do that. Yeah. Now what we are what we are I think experiencing is uh, the fact that our societies are growing very quickly, are evolving very quickly. Um, firstly, because obviously through through globalization, um, uh, people are traveling more. We are obviously part of the European Union, so we are also in a way a gate, a gateway into into Europe, especially for for countries uh, in the in the Mediterranean and in the in the north of Africa. So there's there's that dynamic, and that that obviously has created a situation where we are growing. Uh, quickly. Now let's let's keep in mind Malta was always um, a country of Corsara. Malta was always a country of, of pirates and of, of of merchants and and we have always negotiated all the time with people who have always been bartering. Mm -hmm. So this idea of of being in touch with with um, co different communities has always or has for for a number of years been a, a staple sort of a staple element in our in our mm -hmm. uh, social diet. Now. Obviously, this uh, this has created this created a, a particular dynamic, um, and and I think what we have is a society at this point in time, which is which has a lot of positives, but I think there are two major problems. One, there is a, a lack of leadership, mm -hmm. and I'm not saying just in government and in, in political parties yeah. as well, but I think. We do not have inspirational leaders. If I had yes. to ask you, uh, who is this one? Who is, you know, who are, I mean, before we used to, you used to know. Uh, if I, if I, I, if I had to ask you, who are the backbenchers in, in Parliament? You'd probably stall, and I, even I would, I would, I would stall, and I would stammer because, um, because you can't see enough leadership there. So we have a situation where we have a problem of leadership at government level, at NGOs level, at at, uh, at the church level. We have a major. Is this skill lacking, or? I think I think I think people are. I don't know why the reason is happening. You you are better placed to to do that analysis mm -hmm. because of your expertise. But um, if you had to agree with this, but uh, I think that uh, the problem is 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 multi pronged. I think there is. Uh, there is a fear to 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 be a leader. Yeah. I think it is it also ties up with the second issue that I was going to mention, which is that we have a society where 
from community who have moved into being individuals within the community yeah. to individualism. Yeah. And that is really worrying because I feel that I am completely in control of my destiny, completely yeah. in control of what I want my life to look like. If I know what I want. If I know what I want. But yeah. I think that having money, having a state and having that's status, enough. that's not. enough. But it's not. We know that it's not because there is evidence. We have research showing us yeah not only by our faculty, but also uh, on a, a number of other faculties and other colleagues, showing us, for example, that our our rate of loneliness has skyrocketed between 54, and in certain research, it is showing also going up to 50, 57%, mm -hmm. a spike of between 11 and 15% from uh, three years ago. Uh, from 2022, uh, the, 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 uh, from 2019, it went up. Uh, by 11% in 2022, even possibly more than that, because we took very conservative numbers. So um, we have a serious issue. 200,000 Maltese citizens from the age of 11 upwards, not including people in residential homes, foreigners, and people in, in uh, you know, in, in, in residential settings and like, uh, the, so probably the number would be even bigger if I had to include those, are considered themselves uh, considered themselves as lonely. This shows very clearly that there is uh, this enfranchisement with, with, the, with the society. This shows that there is alienation. That we think that having an affluent community is enough, but the truth is it's showing that we have uh, r r serious, serious structural issues. What are the causes of, of loneliness? The causes of loneliness are are very. They vary. Um, you have you have emotional loneliness, social loneliness. You have loneliness coming in from inside out to outside in. So mm -hmm. so it varies. Um, first of all, I must say that uh, the, the the biggest population, the biggest demographic demography that has shown the most uh, the highest spike in loneliness was the 11 to 19 year olds, which is very which is very strange. I know you you are involved with young people. But you might you might confirm this. There is there is a problem there. People, young people are feeling increasingly lonely, mm -hmm. um, and then you the have the, come to mind, yes, and then you have the 55 year olds. Now, what where where does loneliness come from? Loneliness comes from particular circumstances that are life changing. For example, separation, death, yeah. death of a death of a family member, death of a pet. So there are there are a number of a number of, of factors. Um, there are, for example, other factors like starting your business, starting your firm, um, endless hours of work, uh, like we are doing ourselves today. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's 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 late afternoon and we're still we're still at it instead of you know having a go at 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 uh, you know cooking something, enjoying a coffee yeah. or whatever. <laughs> Sorry, padel. <laughs> or uh, or padel thing. or it's padel. Today. It is the thing. It is the thing. So so I'm messing up your padel moment. That's no, okay. I never, uh, I never went. It's coming. It's coming. thing. It is becoming a thing. Um, yes, and uh, uh, I think I think there's that, and then the, I think there's all, there are also uh, internal factors, yeah. which are related to depression. Um, uh, and to to psychological to psychological issues, uh, there, there are there are, so so it is it is a it is a there are different there are different reasons. But you, I'm interested to know why you think young people are are increasingly mm -hmm. lonely. Um, two things. Well, one, the the major one, I think, the main theme would be authenticity. There's uh -huh. the issue with authenticity and how authentic I can be in uh, in what I do. Uh -huh. So how whether I'm accept, accepted from society and from the people that I'm interacting with um, if I'm authentic if I'm my true self so there is an, an element of authenticity yes authentic I can and be. I think that is uh, being determined also by, by social media definitely and linked to that is that I always need to perform yes which there is, is that also point, that is a, that, there's a, there's the element of burnout that I need to be at least as good as my friend that's right as good as my peer and that's sometimes not realistic because social media is only showing you a fraction of what reality is. And people are making the choice of what to put out there on social media, on stories, Instagram, TikToks, whatever. But what we see is what we believe. And that is, and that That's is right. becoming a problem. And I think the algorithm is, is learning what we want to see. Yes. Is what is, yeah. yes, yes. The, uh, uh, the children yeah. cognitive, they, they are not able to, even adults, um, they are not able to decipher whether um, to balance things that what I'm seeing might not be true. It might be a possible true or partially true. Or we don't want to. Yeah. Or they don't want to. 
And we want to, we, uh, 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 there is a dichotomy because we want to live that life. Yes. We are envious of yes. that life. Yes, because obviously, uh, yes, because um, the, the, the irony is that, as, as we all know, I mean, and evolutionary psychology and evolution theory will, will, will keep saying this and will keep repeating this. We have, we, ha- we depend entirely or we, uh, we depend a lot uh, on each other. We have always done that to survive. We're not the fosters, we're not the strongest, but yet we have managed to mm-hmm. uh, outlive a number of species which are much faster and much stronger. Um, why? Because we have always believed, I think one of the main reasons was, apart from learning to use tools, uh, our communication abilities were always uh, more 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 advanced, but also because people learned uh, fro- for, for, for these last centuries and thousands of years that we can survive if we're together. Now, I think instead of using that sort of thinking, that framework as being this element of living together is 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 a value in itself. It's it has become more like being like the others, uh, sort of the, my my objective. And uh, and yes, and and I think I think social media. Whilst I would have loved to be a young person at this this time of the you know, uh, and and have all this access to to to. Uh, uh, social media and I think it is a brilliant, brilliant tool so I do not want to demonize it in any way but I also think that people have uh, replaced, are replacing reality with, with virtual reality and thinking that um, uh, mm-hmm. uh, that that what that what others post is is what they really are and we know that that is not true and yet we keep trying mm-hmm. to be, you know the most strong, the most beautiful the most enduring, the most um, uh, liked um, and we know that 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 is that does not necessarily happen that way. The sad thing about this is that the more I'm, I'm thinking and the more you're elaborating on this is that we want to be someone else. There is this kind yes. of vibe that we want to be someone else. Uh, we want to be him. We want to be her. We want to be them. Whatever it is, but we don't want to be us. Yes, I think yes, that's true. Uh, in in a way, it has always been. I remember being a small, uh, you know, a young person, and and we did not have social media, we did not have any, and we were always envious of rock stars, of superstars. Yes, yes, yes. We but we always we also s- tried to be, you know, um, like the cool person in the group. Yeah. You know, so so the the this this aspiration of trying to be somebody that you are not probably has always been there. Now it, it is not a, just a question of wanting to be, sort of trying, to, but believing that if you're not going to be that, yeah. then you there is there is something That's missing. Nice. So there's 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 that, and what that is doing is actually isolating people, because what that is doing is, because people are trying to, be something that they are not, and they are realizing that they cannot be. You know, they can't be this porn star that they see on on porn TV on on porn on porn sites or they can't be this beautiful woman or they can't be this this super sexy man who 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 you know um, so once you do that i think one of the things that is happening is that they are withdrawing and and they are choosing to use social media as a as a so as a medium to communicate rather than doing it directly themselves mm-hmm. that is why i find extremely valuable important and crucial that we have uh, non-formal education and you know yeah. organizations like like scouts like girl guides like uh, you know uh, all these all these very important yeah. organizations because they they still believe in the human contact i think that's very important i think it's very formative as well in in, in, in young people because um, when we're when we're younger when we're forming our eyes our sense of identity i think it's important to show youngsters and that has always been my mission in Scouts, that, uh, to show them what they're good at. Because That's right, yes. um, there's always this debate whether you should focus on your weaknesses to make them strengths or whether you focus on your strengths to make them even better. And I think there's, personally I believe that there should be a balance in both, but I'm more inclined to say that you should focus on your strengths so you can make them better and make yourself better, and these by time might overshadow some of, some of your weaknesses. Yes, yes, uh, yes. I, I, I think I agree with, with, with that. Um, uh, and I also think that it's okay to be to be weak. 
and it's okay to have weaknesses. And it's not necessarily um, uh, a need to to change your weaknesses into strengths always. I mean, it's fine to to be shy. It's how you it's how you navigate mm-hmm. your shyness. It's fine. It's fine to to have you know irritable bowel syndrome before you're going to a lecture, or yeah. or it's fine to be uh, uncomfortable before you 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 know go to a football game because you're a player and, and you're very excited. Um, so uh, I also think that there is this idea that that we need to strive to, to become perfect, so perfect uh, instead of striving to become who we are. Yes. Um, and it is, uh, it is unpacking, you know, it is unpacking ourselves, which is important, more important, rather than trying to um, create um, uh, cre- create ourselves as being these super bionic human beings that you know are 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 perfect these super mm-hmm. super persons um, so so that I, I think that is that is fine um, uh, but it is also a fact that that society has created a lot of a lot of pressures and standards, pressures and standards yes yes I, th- I think we, we sometimes we expect too much out of us as well. And we don't have, yes. we don't have, we might not have the patience to develop a skill, to develop an, a, a trait uh, sometimes, because in order to develop a craft, it takes time. Uh, earlier, before th- before we started shooting, you asked me, are you happy with the numbers that you're getting on the podcast? And my answer to that was, um, I'm not, in reality, um, I, you always want something better. Of course. But I'm, a, I'm accept, I accept that um, uh, my podcast hasn't been, I'm around for a while. Uh, I'm still new to the. I'm still a new face, to be honest. So I'm. I'm still enjoying the the, the journey. So you you accept the process of growth. Um, I'm still in the process of becoming a better host. Every podcast I shoot, um, um, and that is that consistency. That um, an element of dedication to constantly, little little by little, improving yourself to what to what you're doing. Yes. Yes. Um, uh I think you've answered your question very well. Um, uh, <laughs> no, because because that is that is that is um, uh, how it is. I, I, we're not saying that we are we are we shouldn't we shouldn't have um, uh, we shouldn't try to aspire to become to improve. But there's there's I think a fundamental element which I think we are we are struggling with and we have a tension an enormous tension with, which is I think social relations. Um, until until you know five thousand years ago, four thousand I don't know when money came around. Um, we used to use bartering. Yeah. Now bartering is very interesting as a concept. There is yeah. a there is a lot of work that was done by people like Graeber and other people uh, who talk about about bartering. But um, I think one of the things that messed up our society was money. The whole notion of money. Why? Because because we started creating a measure which is an artificial measure. Um, bartering was different. Bartering was based on what I have and what I need, what you have and what you need. And we found a way of creating this relationship where we negotiated that you giving me three chickens um, uh, because I need to have a, a good supply of eggs because my kids are still young um, is equivalent to me giving you the horse so that you can plow your fields. Now, how could you come to a, to a conclusion that three chickens or four chickens or ten chickens is equivalent to one horse? Absolutely. It doesn't make any sense. Um, but the fact that it, 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 there was this creation of, um, uh, of, of social relations, because we related socially, we, we came to the conclusion of of what you need, what I need, and we exchanged what um, we had. We created a currency. We created a currency for ourselves. Money doesn't do that. Money creates its currency, and then you have to fit in. Now, you tell me in this corridor here, if we didn't have a, a, a cleaner, what, what, what situation would it be in? Who would wash the, the, the bathroom and the toilets? Messed up by us, okay, because we're, we're too too busy to 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 make sure that we don't mess up our our bathrooms now if the cleaner came at four and did not come at four in the morning for two or three days let alone forever you know would have a complete chaos now if i had to tell you listen 
and a secretary doesn't come or a lecturer doesn't come, well, I don't think it would be too big an issue. It would affect a small number of people. But that's, that, that if we had to see the, 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 the scale of who gets paid best would be the, 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 the lecturer, then the administrator, and finally the worst of are the cleaners. So we have created this idea of what is of value depending on how we decide what is value. And obviously we know this is, this is pure, pure hegemony that this happens because uh, a group of people or a class of people or a, or a category of people or a cluster of people think that this is more valuable than that. Which is which is absolutely not true. I mean, what Marx was saying when he spoke about the economic economic structure and the economic base it makes pure pure and and impeccable sense. Because how can you value one job as being uh, more, you know, more um, uh, 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 valuable than other jobs? So, so I think I think the, the notion of bartering was an opportunity. It was a fantastic opportunity because we exchanged directly without an intermediary. We don't have the money. Mm -hmm. We don't have the values of the market. We don't have price priceless. We don't have nothing. We just have each other, and we are negotiating. And I think that once once we left, we got away from that. I think that has, uh, in a way, started creating a number of difficulties in terms of of. Uh, recognizing the value of of having each other and of relating to each other on this level. And I'm thinking, um, I never thought of this, so it's, it's, it's something that you, you have really come, come, come to it. Um, it's the fact that well, in bartering, it seems that there is, I have always something I can give in transaction to. Yes. So um, from a humanistic point of view and like you, you, you would think that I always have something to give. Yes. But m money doesn't give you that. No. I, I only have time, so I'm exchanging time for money. But in bartering, I have the chickens, I have the horse, I have whatever it is. I have something yes. um, of value that I can negotiate That's right. something with. So yes. And and the and the the human context remains remains extremely um, uh, uh, close to. The transaction, mm -hmm. whilst in 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 money, when it comes to money, it is uh, it creates uh, a number of a number of of, of obstacles. Um, but I think fundamentally, mm -hmm. apart from 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 this this, because probably we'll never go go back to bartering, even though <laughs> it happens so in in the construction industry. Mind you, because you, the, co yes, the, 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 the you know, I'll I'll nice. give you a flat instead of paying you for for yeah. the work you did for me, but. Um, but but very rarely and very very scarce specific, uh, specific. Yeah. and even there there is a there is a quantification because yeah. we know how much concrete we bought we know how much yeah. stuff we bought. But um, uh, so so but apart from everything else, I think we are we're excluding one of the most fundamental needs that we have, which is which is human hum, hum, human touch, and I think um, here come in the rich you know the rituals. If, if we if we had to remember what happened in COVID, I mean, one of the things probably people remember is the, the concern that they had because they couldn't go to church. And uh, and you start asking yourself, but why did people bother so much? That there was a lot of a lot of anxiety from a number of people because they couldn't go to church. And why was that? Because I think people felt that there's a routine. You are going because at the end of the day, if you believe in God, you can sort of in a way create in those circumstances create your own church if you want yeah. uh, your own your own private space your own uh, prayer space within you know your house oh, yeah. Where, yeah. but people needed to be with each other people needed to pray with each other people need to to know that whilst they are praying other people are near them they had the routine they had the time of the, the mass because rituals are fundamental and it seems that we haven't learned the lesson COVID took away a number of our rituals um, of people meeting at the office here, you know, we, we, we still struggle with having to meet each other because we are doing lecturing online. Yeah. Uh, there are students who, are, who, who have never met face to face who are who are online. I, I always teach them online. Um, and I think we lose a lot. We lose a lot on that. We have the, the, the notion of ritual, of rituals of people meeting within certain sort of prescribed or semi-prescribed if you want context mm -hmm. are are incredibly important are are very important 
um, and we are losing those. We are losing those because we are working long hours, so we don't have time, we don't have energy, we don't have an interest. We think that it is being invasive because you, you mm -hmm. take care of each other. Mm -hmm. We think it is not uh, any more fashionable that you are that you are courteous and uh, the way you you relate to other people and the way you yeah. you, you and the, and the etiquette and saying good morning, good afternoon, thank you. Um, I'm I'm always very surprised when I go to a to a restaurant and uh, and I enjoy the food. So I don't do it always because you don't always enjoy the food in the same way. But when I enjoy the food, I go up to the to the uh, restaurant manager. I do this almost practically every time. Well, obviously when the food is good, yeah. and I ask them who the cook is, okay. and they they give me a bit of a of a look, thinking what 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 is he about. Yeah. And later I would like to talk to him, and they give me even more that that strange yeah. look, thinking that I'm going to have a go at him, and I just go and tell him, listen. I've took the, uh, you know, I've I've, I've ordered these, these um, I don't know, in yoki or I've ordered this this pasta or I've ordered this pizza, and it was, you know, it was like fantastic. You've, you've really, you know, um, I really enjoyed eating. Thank you very much. And I just leave. I, and and what what fascinates me is their surprised look, very, which is the reason being very obvious. Very few people go to thank them for for for. You know, just recognizing that they yeah. they gave yeah, me nice, gave nice. me you know, so it doesn't. Now I like to do that because I like the expression. I, I enjoy the expression of the of the head waiter or the, the the restaurant manager, and I have a bit of a go at him or her. Uh, but apart from that, about apart from taking a bit the mickey from them, it is also because I feel that being recognized and being validated for what we do, you can never do it to yourself. I mean. This talk about you loving yourself is is true. Okay, I love myself. Well, I don't really have an option. I mean, I I would like You're to. Stuck with I'm stuck with myself, so I'd I'd rather have you know a, a six pack and and uh, and you know I don't know such a big nose or or whatever and more hair maybe I don't know I I could go on, um, uh, but but I'm stuck with my with 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 what I am and and who I am. So, so um, there's no, but it's okay. You love yourself. I, this is me. I, I, I just, yeah. I just, you know, handle myself in the, in the way. Um, but I need people to love me. I cannot love myself only. I need people to love me. And the moment that I haven't got people who are validating me, who love me, who appreciate me, who, who show affection, affection, who uh, care, uh, it isn't like just losing 50% of that, of, of what I need, it is losing much more. So it's 10% maybe important to love yourself, but the, the rest of the, of the, you know, the, the other 90% yeah, has to come from the, it has to, it has to be. So it is being recognized for your work by, by the people around you, um, uh, you know, the, 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 the people who you love directly, like the family or family and friends, um, uh, students who tell me that they enjoy the lecture or listen, we've had better lectures, but yours was a good effort. Um, you know, these little, little, little things that, that are extremely important. So recognition is, is fundamental. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we don't do that, and I think we are losing out. And if we're not careful, we'll get used to not having the, this. Mm -hmm. There was um, uh, a very interesting series by Netflix, Afterlife, of um, of the stand-up comedian. Um, uh, oh, uh, Gary, uh, Gra Gra uh, I forgot the name. Okay, but, but know, we're, I, we're, we're not. I know, I, I, and I watched the okay. series, I remember. Uh, Afterlife, yes, and, yes, and yes, I, yes, think, yes. I think what... What he seemed to struggle with is the, the fact that people were unable to connect with him. Yes. So it wasn't not being surrounded with people or people not any. I mean, the, apart from that old lady who used to be yes. at the cemetery as yes. well. Um, with whom he did form a connection. With, he, with whom he did form a connection. Um, but but it was ve the connections were very scarce, very very very. Um, so so yes, and 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 I think I think. I mean, bereavement is very complex, as we all know. But, but I think the the biggest, the biggest uh, challenge he had there is that um, he there was no connection ap apart from his dog, which I can I can identify with, yeah. and, and obviously um, this this old lady. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm trying to connect the dots with what you are saying about the bartering thing. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> I think I I I I've, I've arrived somewhere. Uh, <laughs> um, and 
the 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 aspect of conflict resolution um, is popping up to mind very good in the sense earlier on and uh, today you mentioned the the relationships that we built with one another and i think that we are losing the ability to effectively communicate with one another and to come to not necessarily a compromise because a compromise can be a win-lose kind of situation but a way how we can both be happy about the outcome and i'm not sure whether this is related to the increased um, uh, separation rates divorces and, and and whatnot but i think this is the root cause of of, of many conflicts we're losing the ability to appreciate one another for, for, for the person that they yes. are. I mean, the, the grass always looks greener on the other side. Yes. Ah, the other person is doing that, yes. the other person is doing that. It's better than you on this. We can't be perfect for each other, but everyone is filling some void within each other. Yes, yes. And, uh, and I, I'm, I'm tying this with the, with the bartering concept, because when we, when we are bartering, and, and as you explained it, is that we are giving something. We know that we can give something to others, but money makes it transactional that we have to buy something That's right. if we don't have the the finance there's almost, resources almost an element of coercion there yeah. that if you don't give me the money i'm sorry you're not yeah. going to you're not going to eat yeah now imagine i mean somebody going into a supermarket and yeah. and he's homeless he doesn't have any food he tells us i want i want you know i want a piece of perzut a piece of yeah, yeah and uh, and some and some nice bread Tell him you have to pay. Tell him no, I don't have any money to pay. They'll just chuck him out. Can I wash the dishes? <laughs> <laughs> and they'll chuck him out. So yeah, but um, um, because and even though it is a supermarket or a restaurant or whatever, full of full of food, yeah. uh, and we and we wa- and we waste a lot of food and we throw away a lot of food. In bartering, it wouldn't have been that way. And yeah. in bartering, it would be as you said. It's, it's, I, I am. I do not have anything to give you. I can give you my time. Yes. I can give you, um, and and instead you give but me. You're trying return. to find something. You're to trying give. to find. You're trying, you're to, trying find. to find. Now we are. Give. We have. We are. We 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 lose a lot when we when we do not um, uh, when we do not um, take on board these these um, mm-hmm. these these elements. Um, we we lose a lot when we are not. Um, uh, yeah, when we are, we are when we are, when we do a, we try to do away with relations, I think. This is my, per, my 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 perception of things, and going back to our initial argument about politics and society and culture, I think Malta specifically because we were colonized for so many years, and we have some time. I think it's still part of our identity that we there we need to report to someone else that we are not fully able to take ownership yeah. and direction of our own actions. And that is why I asked you before, what can we do as a as society, as individuals in a societal context to um, add value to the present situation? And one example throughout the conversation popped to mind is the person throwing a piece of paper on the road. Why are you throwing a piece of paper on the road? It's part of your responsibility to keep the environment clean. And then you mentioned the cleaner uh, um, example as well. It's what we can do to make things better around us. Yes. Um, uh, I mean, I, 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 I wouldn't. I, there, there, there's loads of things that that we can do. Um, I, I think the first important um, uh, um, pillar that we really need to start recognizing. Once again, is um, the, the 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 pillar of of values. Um, a society cannot function without values. It would be complete bedlam. It would be uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. It would be a complete chaos. And and that is what we risk because values, community shared values, are not only those elements that are safeguarded by law and controlled by sanctioning. But values are important because they are fundamental in in um, uh, uh, helping us uh, to 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 have a sort of a direction where the where the, the ship needs to go. Um, yeah, I, you know this is like like having a cruise liner. I'm sure people would prefer some people would prefer to stay an extra night at this particular island. Others would say, listen, this island is not nice. I'd rather move on. Yes. But then there are there are certain values. There are certain 
there are certain rules that we we agree to you agree to trust your leader you agree that the leader has to be a good and competent one uh, you need to uh, agree that there are times that you don't can't have your way but you have to. so there are there are rules which are very important so i think rules but i think also rules based on values i think our values are becoming something that we need to teach to people when i when i hear my colleagues here at university um, saying that we teach values we have a study unit on values study unit on ethics i mean it's it's crazy because we had to tell me listen professional ethics is because there are some components which are important that you plug into your your profession so that i i understand you know but when we are talking about yeah. you teaching me values you're teaching me what is right and wrong at the age of 22 23 24 mm. i mean it's it's ridiculous it's already too late because <laughs> it's too late and it shouldn't be done at any stage we should learn because we live with each other we should learn through play we should learn through being in organizations and voluntary work we should learn through school we should learn through uh, our interactions within the family we should learn through our interactions with our siblings and our our extended family and and it seems that that a lot of that is not happening because why because we are we are obsessed with sending our children to the best ballet school to thinking that i live in meliha but my son should be uh, uh, going to or my daughter should be going to play football at floriana because you know mm -hmm. uh, that is the best the best the best um, nursery, uh, nursery. Uh, then you it is in this scout group but the one you know at the other end of the of the island because you know there is there's this particular i mean we we we, we create all these all these the, the, these complicated situations which leave us less time to be with our children um, we are we are not we are not giving them enough time to to absorb what they're doing they're moving from one thing to another yeah. so why why is it that you have to send your your child to ballet to gymnastics and to a sports like oh, for what yeah. i mean come on i do have this conversation quite often with some parents Yes, parents and parents. Parents think that first of all, parents I think are influenced by other parents. And parents think that unless you you send them to every bloody activity that there is in this world, it feels as if you are not fulfilling your, fulfilling your duties. And FOMO as well, and to some extent, FOMO as well, fear of missing out. Yes, 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 yes. But 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 the, and and I think even the state needs to be careful. That's why I said that the country that the state needs to have values. Let me give you an example. FES. FES is a very important organization. Mm -hmm. um, I am in FES. I am part of FES, and um, I uh, uh, I am on the board of FES, and I re and I recognize that it does a lot of work. But how come you have children who have kids who are there from seven in the morning till six, seven at night? And it's not just because their parents have a long shift, because that I understand, because that is why you have these services. Mm -hmm. But if you are a mother, if you are a father, if you are a guardian, for fuck's sake, you have to realize that um, if, if, if there is time where you are at home, you don't leave him at Nana, you don't leave him at your at, at affairs, you don't leave him at a childcare, but you take your child and spend time with him. You spend time with her, you spend time with them. Um, you 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 have an interest in their homework. You watch TV with them. You cook with them. You organize the table with them. You play with them. You cry with them. You listen to the stories with them. Um, and I can't believe it that, that I can't believe that we are at a stage where people have to work 12, 13 hours a day every day, and we don't think that that is a crisis because there's that as well, that yeah. people to keep yeah. up with the expenses yeah. or the cost of living and all the difficulties that there are to pay to pay uh, your your home loan, your your rent, uh, your you know your bills, etc. Yeah. might create that problem. But okay, but yeah, well that can be the case. But if that is the case, we also we need to ask ourselves but why is this happening why are we going to, why, why are we putting ourselves into you know like this hamster wheel where where we think that that the more we walk the more we with and we still remain in the same place as if it's always tomorrow that's going to be a better day mm -hmm. it's always tomorrow that's going to be a better day why isn't today a better day why isn't today a day where you can have some time for yourselves why have we create a, created a situation for ourselves an economy for ourselves that does not allow that we have some breathing space unions have fought endlessly 
endlessly uh, in this century and the century before this to have an eight hour shift an eight hour uh, um, sleep and eight hours of rest free time they have worked endlessly now you you tell me who is working eight hours because i think nobody's working eight hours and it's ridiculous and who's sleeping eight hours and nobody's sleeping eight hours and who is who is uh, uh, you know having time to you know go shopping uh, have a walk go with your spend time with your dog with your children go and have a coffee you know it doesn't have to be every day but you know it's crazy we're, i mean we're speaking at the beginning of this podcast my my work and so uh, my balance there's no yes. balance absolutely yes. there's no balance and it is wrong it is completely wrong uh, at times people think that the more complicated your life the more intense your life the more the less time you have for yourself the better you recognize as in, in yes. society yes. now the only thing it does it increases your your uh, chances of getting a heart attack it increases your chances of having high blood pressure it increases your your chances of feeling lonely it increases your chances of of not finding sense and value in your life and 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 uh, uh, and contemplating uh, suicide that is what it does very profound um, I think it's, it's what it's what we are there, I think there are it's it's multifaceted because there are a lot of layers with this and, and, uh, and I think we've touched many upon yes. during this episode is that the, the thing that how we see ourselves from inside looking out how we think people see us how we see other people um, uh, what we feel our life mission is um, we mentioned parenting and, and child rearing it has become a chore to raise children. It, 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 yes. it isn't anymore. Um, in fact, alive, people. Alive. In fact, people are not having children. Yeah, and people are not having children because they think uh, that they can't combine. And in a way, and in a way, it's true. It's they true. can't combine uh, the demands that they have uh, with buying property or renting uh, to having children. Yeah. to having a career it seems that the three things have have sort of gone gone you know uh, a well they have gone completely in different directions that and and the fact that um, parents i would say right to so um, i'm not a parent um but i feel that parents right to so they want they still want to live their lives um, as even though they don't have children the message is but um, they want to enjoy life even with kids, individuals, not as parents, but, they're giving everything. But this idea, I mean, I mean, this idea that that your life sort of stops, stops <laughs> because you have kids is 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 not true. Um, uh, of course, it is. Uh, it is a responsibility. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of you know responsibility yeah. for sure. Okay, we agree on that. There's nothing to disagree on it. But um, uh, but it doesn't mean that that life stops because because you have kids because we are taught. We, are, we think we are made to think that 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 is the case um uh, and uh, and you know and and you can you can manage to combine uh, things but then there are also the expectations of so you have to travel you have to go yes. around the world yes. i mean you know you're spending 30 40 thousand on a on a wedding and then you have yes. your your um, um, honeymoon in the bloody caribbean where you're going to spend <laughs> another ten thousand. i mean what's the time because now is the time because, because, now is the time because <laughs> so what is what is the difference going to sicily for a couple of days uh, enjoying yourself in a nice uh agriturism or going going in nice you know spending some time in london or or in other another city in, 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 in Europe where you can can have a nice holiday but not spend so much money why do we because you know it's it's trendy to say that I have gone to Thailand for my honeymoon so we it is a constant a constant um, uh, a struggle to try and respond to what other people and technology mm-hmm. and the industry obviously like the, 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 the catering industry the, the um, hospitality industry is trying to convince us that that is the way that you'll be happy by going there um, uh, I don't know I, I, I'd rather spend my time having a coffee in, a, in, 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 in my village piazza than traveling to, my, to be completely honest it's become so stressful to travel I'm no, I know a lot of people don't agree with me but <laughs> for me spending time at home or at the at the piazza having a coffee or a pizza there uh, feels like being in in paris feels like being in 
in, in, in Venezia. I, I can't see, I can't see the, a big difference apart from the cost of going to these places. Because to you, it might seem that traveling, you're still switched on, and you need to switch off. It, it, it is, it is, yes, and 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 I just, I just don't enjoy traveling. To, yeah. to be quite honest, um, but but. Uh, well, when I when I do travel, then I enjoy it. Yes. I'm not I'm not that boring, but <laughs> but uh, but it isn't something that I I aspire to. You know, uh, uh, my my sort of my target is yes. to to go abroad. But it's also a question of what what is important for us as well. Having mm-hmm. a nice book, having a nice series to watch, mm-hmm. spending time with my dog, with my cat, with my family. For me, those are of a, of, of of immense yeah. value. And we're shooting this in January 2024. What do you wish for yourself in 2024? I am, I am, uh, you know, I'm, I'm scaramantico. How do you say that? I, I am, uh, I don't, I don't uh, like to, to predict things. I mean, uh, this this is going to be a particular year for me, to be quite honest, because there are a couple of decisions that, that. Um, I, I I will be taking and, and uh, okay. so so it will be a particular um, no I I just I just want to become uh, more of a private person if you had to ask me um, I'm 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 looking forward to become more of a private person um, and simplifying my life um, and having more time for myself and for the people around me so that would be my my. Uh, my aspiration. We'll, we'll see in December. Right. Well, that, that's quite a, quite the quite a drastic shift, I would say. It is a drastic. It is a drastic. I'm not saying I'll go underground, but um, <laughs> uh, I yeah I I I I li- I would like to. Um, uh, I'm I'm uh, I'm fascinated by Banksy. Banksy is the famous um, uh, stencil artist. He has that girl with the balloon. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. It's called the girl with the balloon. Uh, he had this famous painting of the girl with the balloon that got caught in a shredder. Um, it's a famous, famous story, which shows that art was creating. And anyway, it's, it's, it's very. I use I use Banksy a lot in in my in my um, lecturing. Banksy is, has remained anonymous, although a lot of people seem to know who he is, or it could be a. a a cooperative of people, a consortium of people, rather than just being one person. But Banksy, um, I admire because he uses art, he uses graffiti, stencil art, but on graffiti, uh, on, on walls, graffiti art. Um, but his style is with stencils, so that he's fast and quick. And he has pieces all over the world and museums all over the world. And it, it's very, it's very, a very, very price. You know, uh, very good value mm-hmm. art. Uh, but one of the things that he he seems to convey is that you can be doing stuff, passing on very important political messages, even privately. And this anonymity I find intriguing. We are living in a society which is continuously surveilled. We are surveilled by cameras, by technology. Continuously, people know where we are all the time. People know what we're doing all the time. We tell people all the time what we're doing. We're eating patata al forn. We are. Uh, I. This is my. This is my new tanga. This is my new. This is my new yacht. This is my new. Uh, you know, we're doing that all the time, all the time, all the time. So there's, there's none, no, no, no privacy left, and he, and we think that being out there all the time, being in, in the spot all the time, uh, gives us more value. Mm-hmm. Banks shows us that his art very powerful simple but very powerful art with very powerful messages can create a difference so i am i'm intrigued by that sort of thinking so it's like condensing what uh, what you've accumulated so far in your life and channeling it in yes and i and yes and i i also think that um, i'm i'm 54 this year and i think that uh, most of what I had to say, I said it. So, uh, 
I find myself repeating a lot. Um, so I think um, it is the time for young people uh, to have new leaders, new people in, in leading. And I would rather, as a friend of mine, who, um, once, 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 was we were having a chat here, told me, told me she's looking more at at the micro than the macro, and I think that's where I am. I have invested myself in the macro, and you know, try to pass on messages through the media, through through my positions on 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 a number of issues. But now, I feel more and more uh, compelled to invest in the micro, to invest in these students who. Uh, need somebody to talk to, who need guidance, students who I am sharing some ideas as we've been doing here today uh, with them. And then it's now their turn to take the baton and sort of carry on carry on with the with the journey. Um, uh, that's that's how, how I would like my 2024 to be, to start moving in that direction. Um, it's not a fatalistic um, uh, position, it's just seeing that it is now the moment that you need to sort steer the ship yeah. and maybe it's time to start taking it slowly slowly to the port i think that's a health, a health mindset as well um because oh. um personally i do struggle with co- struggle with co- with uh, closing certain chapters as well so um yes it's always very difficult, very, very difficult so always because you're you've invested in them yes yes yes, yes. yes. Um, but recognizing that your time has come in a certain project or anything that you're doing i think it takes uh, courage to to do it as well yes. so uh, yes and humility to to say listen i've did what i could um this is where where it got me this is where, uh, how far i've come now it's time to to yes. to give that responsibility to someone else yes um uh, without devaluing the fact that experience is always important but i think there are other ways where you can yes. transmit that experience um this thing came to my to mind because uh, um, I, I had replaced here uh, a certain Dr. Anthony Azzopardi. In fact, I still um, uh, sit on, at his desk, at the desk that he had. Um, a, a big admirer of, 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 of Tony and uh, he did a lot in the sector with young people, developed youth work, developed the Department of Youth and Community Studies. So he, he contributed immensely. The day that he retired, that I'm not saying I'm going to retire, but the day that he retired, he retired. And even when I used to ask him about Tony, why? Because I replaced him when his job got fake, and then I, uh, there was an interview call, and I, uh, a call, and I, I took it, I took the post. Uh, but I remember asking, asking him, but ca- can you supervise our students? Would you like to give some lectures? He told me, no, I have retired, and I kept asking him for a bit, and then he got a bit flustered, got a bit yeah. irritated because he thought, I retired. I'm doing other things. Retired doesn't mean he just you know, spending his time on the sofa very different from that (laughs) but um, he thought that this is the moment where he needs to move on I am a a very strong admirer of this that that people don't need to hang on like politicians do like certain people in the civil service do like people who are like blue-eyed boys of of certain ministers do that they keep hanging on to every bit and piece create space create space Um, it's fine that that you move to other things. I don't know. Get yourself one day a week to a sanctuary and and help feed the bloody cats, yeah, yeah. Uh, or else or else go to to the the homeless kitchen and uh, to, 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 and and you know the soup kitchen and help with the homeless, the sharing the food to the homeless. So there's so many things that you can be doing mm-hmm. which are equally important and equally effective. But it becomes so pa- so part of our identity. That if we lose that part, if we, it's, it's yes, like that's why you have to prepare, prepare yeah. for it. You have to prepare for it. Yeah. Yes. So uh, and coming to terms that it might not be no long. Um, it it, it uh-huh. might be something that we are not. Um, we don't want it part of our identity anymore. We had grew that position. Yes. I mean, yes. It, it we, could we be we as well. Form our uh, yes. new identity. Yes. I ourselves. think it, yes, and I think that happens a lot. I think that happens a lot. I think that is healthy. It's fine. I think it, it's part of growth um, as well. In my opinion. Yes. So it's that, and that is fine. Mm-hmm. So um, uh, people will not get rid of me, uh, but <laughs> but um, uh, but yes, I think that um, uh, people need to. Um, we need to start creating space, because as I said, my generation has done what it has had to do. I'm not very proud of my generation, because in the 80s we were speaking about 
construction in the 80s when I was a 16, 17 year old. We were protest, protesting against the system of our education. We are protesting against the fact that there was so much inclu- exclusion. We are protesting against human rights, uh, against the fact that there weren't human rights like this happened in China at the time and in Tiananmen Square and other places. We are protesting against a corrupt political class. And here, then again, here we are with the same issues. So I think being done, being you know, it is our generation who are doing now this, 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 this mess. So it is high time that we say, listen, uh, the good and the bad we've done, and I think now we have to hand over to the young people, to the scouts. <laughs> perhaps, <laughs> perhaps one day. <laughs> and yes. thank you for this, uh, for joining me in today's episode. It's been a very colorful um, episode. We've touched upon various topics which I've enjoyed. Um, very much like your office, which is very <laughs> colorful as well. Yes. And thank you for sharing part of you. You're welcome. Um, hopefully it was as interesting for you being on the other side of the mic. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Um, it's not uh, the usual yes. <laughs> scene. So thank you for being part of Growth thank Scheme you. as well. Thank you very thank much. Thank you so much. Thanks.